Hello. Welcome. Today we're doing a project that I've called the $52 million dog. The reason that I've called this the $52 million dog is because recently this piece of work sold for $52 million. When you see this work, it reminds me of a childhood memory of going to festivals and having people who walked around and they made creatures and hats and various things out of balloons. We're going to do this piece of work that's reminiscent or very much like what you would see at a festival, the $52 million dog. For this project, you're going to need a large sheet of paper. Today I'm using 12 by 18. You could also use 11 by 17. That's great. But you want a larger sheet of paper. You need a pencil and eraser, either colored pencils, Prismacolors, or crayons. I do not have any colored pencils, so I think today I'm going to use crayons because you can use those and I think most people have them at home. And I'm going to put my Prismacolors away, although this piece that I just showed you was done using Prismacolors. They blend very nicely. And you're going to need some shapes. For our background, you're going to need a square. If you can remember, we made these before. A square, and I've attached a pill bottle on the back. It's made from cardboard so that I can hold it like this. You're going to need a triangle. You're going to need a rectangle. I've got a skinny one. And for your dog, you're going to need a small oval and a larger oval. Of our basic shapes, the only one that we're not using today is our circle, but we don't need that for this project. I'm going to put my shapes to the side. I'm going to turn my paper so that it's horizontal. That means that the long side goes from side to side. It's shorter as it goes up and down. I'm going to draw a line. Oh, a ruler would be nice. I'm going to draw a line, doesn't have to be perfectly straight though, down the middle of my paper, just like that. That's going to be our horizon line. The horizon line is where the earth and the sky meet. In this case, we're going to have our dog walking down some grass and with houses in the background, just like a dog would walk in your yard and in your neighbor's yards and things. Our houses are going to be connected. I'm going to take my square and I'm going to put it so that the bottom part of the square is on the line and I'm going to draw my square. Then I'm going to skip a little space and I'm going to draw another square. I dropped my square down low so that our houses can look different. And then I raise, I'll make it a little bit different right here. So I've got three squares, then I've got spaces in between. In those spaces, I'm going to make a slightly taller house just by bringing it up a little bit, and those will be two rectangles. I need to leave a little bit of room for my roof. So I'm going to make my rectangle right here. And we're going to try to make our houses look a little bit different, each one. One way that we can do that are in our details. Some details could be the type of roof that they have. One roof that you might see comes up at an angle and goes all the way up to a point. Now 
That's called a pitched roof. Many of us have pitched roofs. They look like triangles on top. On another house, I'm going to put a line that goes straight up like this and comes in. And then it's got a flat top. That's called a mansard roof. And we're going to have one house with a mansard roof. You know, I didn't tell you at the beginning that you needed a black marker or a Sharpie, but you do. Sorry about that. All right. So we could also have a flat roof. That's one way that we can make our houses look a little bit different. Some roofs go very tall and some roofs do not. Now we can make doors. Most doors are rectangles. Do doors have to be in the center of your house? No, they don't. So we can have doors. Sometimes when you see houses, you see a window over the door. That's called a transom. Sometimes people have two doors, and those are double doors. Let's have a double door right here. There you go. Of course, we need some windows, and windows can be squares. Some windows can be rectangles. They can be divided. Or they can be one single piece of glass. Some houses have one story, some houses have two stories. Oops, my ruler sure would have helped on this one so that my windows could be the same. That would be nice. You're going to draw everything off first. This, of course, is our background. Oops. Let's use our ruler for our windows. That'll make a much, much better, better project. So here are one, two, three, four, five different houses. You can make yours however you would like. Now we're going to work on our dog. And for our dog, we need a larger oval that will be the body and the legs and a smaller oval, which will be the neck, the head, and the tail. We're going to put it directly over our backgrounds. So if you didn't draw your lines too darkly, you'll be able to erase the dark line, the lines for your balloon dog. I'm gonna begin with the body and draw the trace around the big oval. Before I go on, I'm going to erase the background lines that I have made so that it doesn't interfere with my, what I see So, do you see the body? Okay. Let's go on and do the legs. I'm going to use the big one here too. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the big one right here. And that's going to be right at the bottom 
of the body and I'm going to put another one right here. It's going to be right at the bottom of the body. Just like that. Now, because a dog has four legs, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a line right there, which will show that I have two legs. One, two. I'm going to do the same thing on the front. One, two. Now I'm going to make the tail. I'm going to use the small one of the ovals. And again, I'm going to trace around it. And I'm going to erase the background that I saw there. So here's this fluffy little tail right here. And we'll be able to color this in without ruining anything. Now we need his neck and his head. His neck is also the small oval. Trace around your oval. Erase the part that you put in behind. You're saying, well, Miss Day, why did we do the background afterwards? This is really easier for me to draw this like this and just erase a little bit. So here's his neck, and then here comes his face. And just like at a balloon, you're going to have a little bitty triangle with rippled edges there. That's going to be where your balloon ties off. The only thing we lack on our dog are his ears. And I'm just going to put one ear, two ears, just like that. I did that by hand because I did not make a third smaller pattern for that. You can put an eye if you want, and I do, but you don't have to. Oh, he looks kind of wicked right there. Oh, well. Here's our balloon dog. All right. In the foreground, you can or cannot. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to put a foreground, and I'm just going to put some triangles that go every which way, and that's going to represent grass because our little guy is walking in the grass. And I made some zigzag lines to make to look like some kind of foliage that would might be in your neighborhood as you're walking along. Before I color everything in, I'm going to trace over all my lines with Sharpie. And if you have any corrections to make, now is the time to make your corrections before you begin coloring. Today I'm not going to go over all the Sharpie lines because that will take too long. I'm going to go over just a couple of areas to show you how you will color it in to make the best piece that you can make. Remember to trace over all your lines. Here's how I want you to consider coloring it in. Instead of going every which way, I want you to go one direction with your crayon or colored pencil or Prismacolor. I want you to use those things because I want either of those mediums because I want you to blend the color in. 
so that it's not all the same. It may be lighter in one area and darker in one area. That shows where the, your light source. Things closest to the light are lighter. Things further away from the light are darker. So here I'm pressing down pretty hard because that's going to be furthest away from the light. That means things to my left are going to be lighter and things to my, to my right are going to be darker. That shows your light source or where your light is coming from. I'm going to do the same thing on both legs and again go one direction. You might think that it takes longer to do it this way. It does not and it makes such a huge difference. An artist is like a director. You're telling your the person looking at your work of art, which you're telling them where to look. If you're going every which way, they don't get a calm. If you don't want calm, then that's exactly the right thing to do. But every color that you use, you're gonna go one direction. I usually decide, I look at the outside line, and then I decide to use that as my basis of how my line should go. Again, I'm showing that my light source is to the, to the left. So that's gonna be lighter. And my light source is not closest to the part that's darker. That's gonna to be to my right for this particular piece because I don't have a real, well, I do have a real light source as I'm taping, and it's very strong from my left. So there is that. If you've pressed down hard, some of the lines that you made that you erased may come through. Can you tell the difference between the light and the dark on each of these shapes? I didn't treat it as one shape, I treated it as two separate shapes. For today, this is going to be the last piece that I color in, and you'll notice how I'm making it kind of a circle like for this end because it's rounded, and I want the viewer to use that also. So I'm going almost in an arc. one direction. You're going to continue and do each of your shapes and blend your colors together so that there's no rough edge. It goes from light to dark pretty smoothly. My crayons get bent down and I like it like that because that way I know exactly how it's going to respond. Sometimes y'all wonder why I don't like you using my art supplies that I'm using for a project. The reason is, is you get your, everybody has a different way that they hold their materials and you get into a rhythm and you use your materials differently so that they respond to the way you hold them. When someone else uses it, sometimes it loses that memory and it makes it a little bit harder for you to get the same effect. Look, right here I drew my lines too darkly and then I erased them to put my balloon dog on top. So now I have a little indentation that I have to think about to cover that up. It's not so bad right here, but I should have gone a little bit lighter. That would have been nice. Okay, you're gonna continue 
with each part of the piece until every part is colored in. You can blend your colors very nicely. Let me do one or two pieces of the grass before we conclu conclude with our $52 million dog. On these, I'm gonna use yellow, green, and blue. You know that yellow and blue make green, but I'm gonna color this part with my green. And because we discussed our light source being on the left and our the part away from it would be on our right, here's what we're gonna do. I colored it in all green. And this time I don't really care if it's kind of rough because I know that I'm going to blend some other colors in there and it will blend those spaces together. On the left side where it's closest to the light, I'm gonna put yellow in there, which will make the green become a yellow green, a much sunnier color. And on the right side, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to make the green appear darker. See how the rough edges have smoothed out mostly? Take your time, but keep going until you finish each space. And I look forward to seeing your finished projects. That's all that we're going to do for this piece today. But you can see the darks and the whites in each space and how we blended our colors and we watched the directions that we were going when we were coloring in each space. This is with crayon, and this is with Prismacolor. I hope you enjoy this project, and I'll see you next time.